In this video I show you how to run a PLS SEM with JASP. And JASP as a free statistic software provides an alternative to the standard software Smart PLS. It's not as powerful yet as Smart PLS, but for a simple PLS SEM you can use JASP too and don't have to pay anything for it. As an example we will use a dataset that is inbuilt in JASP, Political Democracy, and this is the model we want to estimate. We want to use industrialization 1960 and democratization 1960 to predict democratization 1965. You can find PLS SEM under SEM. If you don't see SEM you have to go to the plus sign and add this to the menu. Here you have to enter the model. There are three basic operators. A reflective measurement model, a formative measurement model and a regression path. And as the fourth, possibly a correlation, even though we won't use this here. First I show you how to specify PLS SEM with a reflective measurement model. The first three lines show the measurement model or the outer model. And here we have the regressions, that is the inner model, the structural model, and industrialization 60 predicts democratization 60, and industrialization 60 and democratization 60 predict democratization 65. And now you use control enter, at least with the Windows version. If you have the Apple version you can read there what you have to press for Apple. Now we could have a first look at the results but before, before we do that we should change some parameters. Here I don't change anything. For the estimation method I would use bootstrapping with at least 5000 samples and I would set a seed value in order to get the same results each time you run the analysis. For the output I would request R squared, reliability measures and observed construct correlations. And for prediction I would like to compare the prediction of the model with a linear model. And since all this is run with bootstrapping it can take some time. Before we can look at the results for the structural part of the model, first we have to check whether the measurement model is ok. For that we look at the reliability. Here is Cronbach's alpha. That should be higher than 0.7 for all constructs, so that is ok. Then for convergent validity we would like to look at the factor loadings. Ideally they should be higher than 0.7. Here that's the case for all but Y3, but this is only just slightly lower than 0.7. It's still significant, so that is ok. Then we want to look at average variance extracted. Unfortunately we don't get this from this PLS SEM dialog, but we can get it at a different place in JASP. Factor CFA. And now we run a CFA with all our constructs. The results of the CFA are not relevant for us, but we can get some additional pieces of information. And now we go down here to additional output, average variance extracted and heterotrade monotrade ratio. The average variance extracted should be 0.5 or higher for all constructs. So this is good. And then about discriminant validity, the heterotrade monotrade ratio, it should be smaller than 0.9 for similar constructs and smaller than 0.85 for unsimilar constructs. Between industrialization 60 and the two democracy measures that's ok. Between the two democracy measures it's very high with 0.981. In this example that's not a problem because those are the same construct measured over time. If this were two different constructs, then we would have a problem here. Ok, back to the PLSEM results. Now we can look at the structural part of the model. We don't have a measure for multicollinearity between the latent variables. We could look at the correlations. Here's a correlation table between our three constructs. And since industrialization 60 and democratization 60 explain democratization 65, the correlation between those two shouldn't be too high. And here we can see 0.439, that's not, not a problem. If you had here something like 0.9 or higher, then you would have problematic multicollinearity. With the R squared you can see how much variance is explained. And the key results are the regression coefficients here, the estimates and the con bootstrap confidence intervals. And since the bootstrap confidence intervals don't include zero, they are significant. So we, here we have significant effects for all three structural parameters. 
In addition, we would like to assess how good is the prediction of this model. For that, we look at this table, endogenous indicator prediction. And here we compare the prediction results of our PLS ACM with the prediction results of a linear model. And ideally, those error values, mean absolute error in this case, are lower for the column target than for the column linear model. And for most predictors, that's the case here. So overall, we have an acceptable model based on a reflective measurement of our three variables. Instead of a reflective measurement, we could also use a formative measurement, or we could mix it. We could use reflective for one construct and formative for the other two. That would be possible too. I will show you how to estimate the same model with a formative measurement model, that is a formative outer model. And here I just change the equal sign to the smaller sign. Now I have the code for a formative measurement model for our three constructs. Again, I run it. Before we look at the structured results, we have to assess the measurement model or the outer model for the formative model too. First, we would like to look at possible multicollinearity between predictors. That is, we want to check whether the predictors for one of our formative constructs are extremely similar to each other. We can't do this currently within this PLS-SEM dialog. For that, we have to change to the regression dialog, linear regression. Now we run three linear regressions with the predictors for each construct. As a dependent variable, you can put in any variable. That doesn't matter. Relevant are only the predictors for the multicollinearity. And here with statistics, we want to choose collinearity diagnostics. Now here we get the variance inflation factor. Ideally, it should be smaller than 5, so they are quite high. But as long as they're not higher than 10, I think this should be OK. And the same you could do for the other two constructs as well. Now back to the PLS SEM. The next thing we want to check is the weights, because for a formative model, we have weights instead of loadings. Ideally, those weights should all be significant. In this example, they are not. There are many that are not significant. For the weights that are not significant, then we have to look at the loadings. And if the loadings are above 0.5 and significant, then that's OK too. And here we can see that for all weights that were not significant, the respective loadings were above 0.5 and significant. So our formative measurement model is OK. And now we could look at the structural part again, the same way we did it earlier. We can look at the regression coefficients, at R squared, and at the quality of the prediction. So that's it for PLS-SEM with JASP. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.